<laughs> test, test. So we're getting ready to begin the public hearing on um, housing and buildings. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Council Member Robert Carnegie, Chair of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, and I'm joined today by Council Member Williams, Carlina Rivera, Barry Gredenchik, Bill Perkins, Helen Rosenthal, Margaret Chen, Fernando Cabrera. We're here to hold a hearing and a vote on a pre-considered intro, which is a bill to clarify and reiterate the provisions of Local Law 196 of 2017 to guard against the issues posed by DOB's recently proposed rule and to ensure that the goals of Local Law 196 are served. Um, we're going to have uh, openings by my predecessor and also Carlos Menchaca. Uh, no, I'm no, I'm okay. My predecessor, Jumani Williams. I'd like to remind everyone who would like to testify today, besides Lou Coletti, to please fill out a card with the sergeant, and we'll be asking to stick to a two-minute clock for all testimony, Lou. <laughs> Council Member Williams. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, for, for holding this uh, hearing and hopefully uh, form a affirmative vote on this bill. Uh, this bill, uh, when uh, Carlos and I uh, shepherded the bill that passed last year, uh, we told everyone we would uh, definitely be on top of it to make sure things uh, went smoothly, and we've been working with the administration uh, to do just that. Uh, this bill is primarily a cleanup to clarify language around who can and uh, have access uh, to be able to uh, provide safety site training. Uh, we just wanted to make sure some of the onerous things, uh, we had, a, so I should say we had uh, several things that we wanted to make sure happened with that bill. One, of course, was to make sure construction site safety was paramount as people uh, were, uh, were being uh, injured and dying. We also wanted to make sure, uh, we know oftentimes when there's monies available, which is what we wanted to make sure was available so it wasn't an unfriendly mandate. We thank the administration for providing that funding. But oftentimes, uh, the smaller organizations, generally uh, the black and brown organizations, do not have access to that funding. And we were clear that we wanted them to have access to that funding. There were some barriers uh, to that, and we wanted to make sure those barriers were lifted while making sure we kept it uh, this, the uh, standards very high. And so this bill just allows DOB and to allow some of those groups who are equipped and well prepared and who do have uh, types of certifications and approvals already to be able to provide a, a good safety site training. Uh, so the, we are aware of some of the concerns about quote unquote trying to water down who can do it. Definitely not that. Uh, we know DOB will not allow that to happen. Uh, we know DOB will, allow, will only uh, allow those who have the qualifications and the ability to do this training. We look forward to continue to work with the administration and all, the, um, and all others uh, to make sure this bill does uh, what it, we said we were going to do. And I just want to thank everybody for hopefully supporting this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. We'll call the uh, testimonies now. <laughs> Luke Coletti, Building Trades Employees Association. If you could just uh, raise your right hand to have your testimony um, affirmed. We've also been joined by council members Torres and Espinal. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? <laughs> Thank you. Now it's working? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity <coughs> uh, this afternoon to uh, uh, come here and, and make some very brief comments. I'm, I'm going to sort of paraphrase my, my testimony. Um, we think that the council has done an outstanding job in passing this bill um, to protect all the safety of all workers. Uh, what w we are proposing, and I don't know if, if it's procedurally possible. If it isn't, I would, I would ask that you consider an amendment. Uh, we completely understand about the issue of access to the training and, and support the concept of what you're doing. What we are very concerned about is 
going back and having the kind of and scandal that we had when OSHA 10 cards were issued, fake OSHA 10 cards. Um, originally, back in February of last year, the Manhattan District Attorney addressed the letter uh, to you um, with some suggestions. And with respect, uh, what happened was they were interviewing workers on, uh, it's called the Moncayo case, where, where three workers were killed. And when they began to talk to the other workers, um, few of the workers had actually taken the course, the 10-hour course. Um, and the contractor at that time just handed out fake cards. And so the workers never received the training. Um, it, was, it was one of the greatest frauds, but there was no ability of the district attorney uh, to, to implement any any criminal activity or any, any, any other kind of action because the state statute doesn't allow it to do. So what we're proposing to you is that temporary cards be issued to these OSHA instructors to, to, to continue the access for some period of time, 90 to 120 days, and then require the buildings department, which I know they probably don't like, they don't want to do, is to have them register with the Department of Buildings and so that those trainers have to in fact certify that they in fact trained individuals um, so that if we're found out that that does not happen, that those, those individuals uh, could be subject um, to at least regulatory uh, and fines. Um, I'm just, I'm really afraid because honestly, I don't trust the non-union contractors. I really don't. Um, and that's, assess that's essentially what we're, we're, we're suggesting. We get it on access, support it, but there has to be some regulatory enforcement or it will come back and embarrass the council, it will embarrass the industry if we, if we end up with the kind of investigations that have already taken place. Thank you, Mr. Coletti. So I'm going to allow uh, my predecessor to respond because I know that both him and Carlos Menchaca spent a great deal of time, effort, and energy into this bill. Um, I will certainly follow up and sit down with my predecessor uh, and the sponsors of the bill to see what we can do on the face. That sounds reasonable, uh, but uh, Council Member Williams, if you'd like to respond. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lou, because uh, you've been um, very important through this whole process as well, so thank always you. welcome uh, your advice and suggestions, and of course that makes sense. One, thank you for supporting uh, what we're trying to do around access. I just wanted to be clear. Um, by, by um, I guess, intimation, it sounds like you're saying this unchecked could allow more fraud. I just want to make sure yes. where that would where that would occur because the fraud happened before this. So yes, but I'm, I'm concerned about getting out ahead of it. I that, see that 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 there there could be potential more fraud if if those instructors who say they have OSHA training cards and can provide the training, yeah. whether they try to cut corners. Uh, with the actual training uh, of, of the people. There's no requirement that DOB has a certification that says yes. Uh, and then the card gets issued, that worker goes to work on, 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 on the site, and God forbid gets hurt, and we find out that they never received any of the training. So what is there, uh, what, is, what protection is there now to stop the fraud that we need to make sure m moves to DOB? I guess I'm trying there to is, there is. That's my point, there are no protections. Oh, so with or without this bill, we have some issues. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so I just wanted—that's what I wanted to clarify. Okay. Yes. Um, but I agree uh, with uh, the chair. Uh, those are uh, very reasonable things that I think we should be talking about with or without the bill. And I think it's important that you put it on the record. And I would love to support whatever efforts we're going to do to make sure we we tamp down on that fraud. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, before we move forward, um, there are questions uh, from some of my colleagues, uh, beginning with uh, Councilmember Rosenthal. So um, I'm new to the issue okay. and new to what you're raising in your testimony. So forgive me if you already have all of this covered. Is, is it possible that some of the things that are not captured in 196 are already captured in 1447? No. 
They're the same. One it looks like a one, one ninety six. Oh right, sorry. Thank you. I here's what I'm wondering. Why isn't look, the exchange you just had with Councilmember Williams? Aren't there periodic in the new law? Aren't there spot checks that are required? There I mean, are, I just want to know: yeah. is it all? Is it that the law is doing nothing, or is it that the law is doing a little something, not enough? Uh, the, the law requires, I think, uh, periodic audits. Yes. But personally, that's after the fact, and it's it, it's too late. You could save somebody's life by knowing that um, and holding somebody accountable by having that trainer certified to the buildings department. These 25 or 30 people, I train them uh, the way the, the bill requires them but to be don't trained. They require that they, s doesn't the bill require that the list of who they no, trained be not. submitted to DOB? It, it currently, no, it doesn't. That, that's the point. But, but according, exactly. again, to the letter that was written by the district attorney, why the, the reason why you want them to register in some formal way is because if when if and when you catch somebody with fraud, now you can penalize them or criminal, criminalize them, without that without making them take some formal action with the buildings department because that becomes they are, they're filing fraudulent reports. So I would just uh, one thing I would ask our team to do is go back and confirm that okay. because I'm not confident that it we don't it's not that we don't you're correct we don't. Require, the bill does not require the individuals to, but I think it's, as I'm hearing it very quickly, the bill does require the trainers to submit a list of who they've trained. Um, a list know, or a certified list. Big difference. If they, if they just submit a list and you then uncover in an audit that they have really not provided that training, you have no enforcement mechanism. When, they, when that trainer- Why couldn't we aggressively go after the trainer who fraudulently listed a name? Because you don't have any statutory authority. That, that's my point. And if that you want list us to has to be certified by that trainer, now you have that trainer on a, certifi a certified list, you can discipline that person because it's a, it's a they've certified that they in fact provided that training and you have found out that they did not. What okay. I'm suggesting is, is a process where you get ahead of it, not just in the audit, so we do it twice, only because this kind of training has just been so exposed to, to, to uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's to uh, fake and phony OSHA cards that I, I don't want to see, I don't want, the council or the or the administration to be embarrassed by an audit, you know audits are it's already done. You can't do anything, um, and <laughs> I don't want the industry to be uh, because I quite frankly don't trust the union, the non union contractors. I really don't. Can you do me a favor for my yeah. colleagues who weren't on housing and buildings last term? Can you just cite uh, the precedent that was set by the fraudulent behavior before? So just kind of okay. what transpired, and okay. then and then Councilmember Perkins. Uh, what has happened is there was a case, it was called the Moncayo case. Uh, district attorney went in to investigate, there were three workers that were killed on that site, and they started to check, as is required by Department of Buildings uh, uh, rules and regulations, that everybody on that site have a 10-hour OSHA class. They started asking the, 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 the rest of the workers, can I see your 10-hour OSHA card, just as building inspectors do on sites every day. And what they found out, that few workers had actually taken the course, uh, and that too many people had skirted that requirement with some companies purchasing large amounts of fake cards and giving them to the workers uh, just so they would not be penalized by the buildings department. And this is all included in the letter from Cy Vance to the council last year. Uh, I'm, I'm reading for it. Well, Lou, thank you. I just wanted the, the, for you to encapsulate it. Yeah. Um, in the interest of time and members having to be at other hearings, um, we have two more questions, and I'll just okay. ask uh, my colleagues to be succinct so that we can vote and that people can make it to their next hearing. Right? So, um, Councilmember Perkins. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, so the companies gave fake cards to workers. Yes. Technically, is that like illegal? No. What is it? Um, <laughs> when you well, give I out shouldn't fake say that. identification. I shouldn't say that. If okay. I mean, yes, it's illegal. There is no enforcement mechanism to penalize them for doing that. Okay. Let's imagine that there is one. What would that look like? I think that would be up to the Department of Buildings, either to rescind that training provider and say, you know what, you, you cannot provide any more training 60 days, 90 days, you're off the list, you, you lied. Um, and I'm not an attorney, I think, but if you certify that you've done something to the Buildings Department, that may invoke a fraud charge against Sounds felonious. The, well, it should be. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're alleging to the Buildings Department that Every individual in this bill on this site has got the training in order to protect themselves from a safety commit uh, a safety perspective, and in fact they haven't. So, in, in the absence of that, uh, who is liable when there's a problem? No one. That's that's exactly the point, Councilman. No one is. So I want to I, I want to thank you so much, Lou, for your testimony. Yeah. I think it I think it gives us a good perspective, and I think what you've mentioned and cited and recommended is reasonable. Um, uh, I'm going to, like I said, confer with um, my, my predecessor and the sponsor of the bill to see if there's any way, but I'd like for you to respond. Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. That's one that just reconfirmed that this issue exists whether or not this bill is passed. Uh, as it's written now, yes. Yeah. So that, that's that, yeah, so I just so want to I, make I sure just my don't colleagues. Know the process whether you you can amend the bill and vote on it next week. Well, I just want to know. So, but the issue of false cards exists even before this bill is passed. That's yeah. what I'm trying. Yes, yes, that's what I just want to clarify for my colleagues. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's something else that we should obviously look at as yeah. a as a committee. Yeah. Is is the issue of you know is the issue around uh, fake credentialing. Yeah. On, on particular trainings, right? Because that's yes. also a, a very serious safety yeah. issue. I just want that's to separate right. that from my colleagues yep. that this bill is not causing the issue. Oh, no. So not at that's all. it. Yeah, not that's not all. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, unfortunately, I have to ask my colleagues to wait. We lost Billy Morton. I'm going to say flip upstairs to the, and then we can go upstairs. This is incredibly confusing. So, if you'd like to follow Billy Morton so that you could vote upstairs. Rosenthal, where are you going? I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere, right. baby. Right here. Yeah, I'm walking. I'm pacing. Can you see him pacing? I'm pacing. Got my eyes on the prize. No, no prize eyes in the classroom. Deep dive. <laughs>
Committee Clerk Billy Martin, will you please call the roll? William Martin, Committee Clerk, roll call vote, Committee on Housing and Buildings. Preconsidered introduction, Chair Cornegy. About aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Espinal. Yes. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Torres. Aye. Williams. I just want to make sure I shout out uh, Councilman Carlos Menchaca again for his work on this bill and the previous bill. Thank you, everyone. I vote aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Rivera. Aye. By a vote of 11 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, item has been adopted by the committee. The hearing is uh, adjourned, officially adjourned. <laughs>